So welcome everyone. This um, December regular meeting of the Board of Education is called to order. This meeting has been um, appropriately advertised as required by law. Roll call, please. Mr. Connor. Present. Mr. Craig. Here. Mrs. Caden. Here. Ms. Mello. Here. Ms. Miller. Here. Ms. Rivera. Here. Mrs. Severino. Here. Celia? Here. Mr. Stotts? Here. Mrs. Wood? Here. Ms. Henry? Here. Okay. There's the agenda. Sorry about that. Okay, so our first um, section on the, oh, um, and I forgot the, the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm sorry. Um, so please join us if you, if you wish to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America, of America. Okay. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God. indivisible, indivisible. With liberty, liberty, and justice, and justice for the world. world. So um, according to the agenda, um, Dr. Oswald, we ha we're doing presentations first. Yes. Okay. So um, could you introduce our first presentation? Yeah. So our, our presentation this evening is um, about our social emotional learning uh, curriculum that we have introduced this year in grades K to five. Um, this is something, a presentation that we did last week for the Oakland board. Um, something that I'm very proud of um, uh, because I think that the team that worked on this, um, several of whom are with us this evening, are um, build a curriculum around the needs of the Collingswood and the Oakland students. Uh, we didn't buy something off the shelf. We didn't go look for a box. Um, we instead really focused on our kids, our kids' needs, and some really um, solid, well-researched um, programs, so, solid research ideas. Um, and um, I will introduce Dr. Whitehouse, who will um, introduce you to the team and then they will walk you through the presentation. You ready? Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, good evening. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to talk to you tonight about the social and emotional learning initiatives being implemented in Collingswood this year. Um, while this has always been an important area and, and topic for the district, a few years ago, the District Equity Committee began exploring SEL to kind of discuss how the efforts to work with students in this area could be more coordinated and implemented more consistently at all levels of intervention in the district. Um, before we begin, I wanted to acknowledge several people and groups that made these efforts possible. Uh, while we were working on our ideas in our SEL committee, um, it became apparent that there weren't too many districts in the area um, to consult with or observe, which was one of the things we wanted to do, because they just weren't implementing SEL instruction in a cohesive way, and that was our goal on the equity committee. Um, so we're really excited to be on the forefront of this effort and are incredibly grateful to everyone listed on this slide for their contributions, um, particularly to Dr. Oswald and the members of the equity committee for spending many, many hours advocating to make our plan a reality. And we also wanna make sure to thank you as our board members for supporting our efforts and um, helping us provide some much needed services to our students and to our staff. Um, so tonight I have with me some of the incredible staff members that are implementing the SEL <laughs> initiative in our elementary schools. We have Kristen Oleksi, the counseling coordinator, Faith Vistas, your SEL and research skills coach, and Vivian Barnett, the school social worker in Oakland. And this team, along with Christy Graham, who's our elementary literacy coach and couldn't be here tonight, work very closely together to support all of our SEL initiatives. Um, Mrs. Barnett is gonna start us off with an overview. Hey, thank you, Dr. Whitehouse. And, and thank you to all of you for giving us the chance to speak about something that we all feel pretty passionate about and um, we're really excited about this curriculum. So first off as an overview, um, what is SEL? SEL or social and emotional learning really provides the structure and the process for kids and adults to develop the fundamental emotional and social competencies and experiences that allow us to understand what we're feeling and then figure out how we can manage those feelings 
uh, set and achieve goals, feel and show empathy for others, establish and maintain relationships, uh, conflict resolution, and how can we make responsible decisions. So our curriculum was designed over the summer and we spent time creating lessons. It was very important to us that they align with the New Jersey Department of Education standards for SEL. And um, we also included some foundational programs uh, based on number one, the zones of regulation, which allows uh, individuals to learn about their emotions and then learn how to manage those emotions. And um, progressively, we decided we wanted to have the curriculum build from one year to the next for the different grades to create a strong understanding of the CASEL competencies. And CASEL stands for the Collaboration for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning. Uh, it's a think tank, if you will, a collaborative that's been around since 1994. And they conduct research and they distribute materials and um, they also establish policy and uh, get, get together networks. So I'll take the next slide, please. So there's a lot on this slide. Um, I guess the most important thing for you to know first and foremost is that we are going to talk about all of these different initiatives tonight, uh, but we wanted to give you an overview of how we're using social and emotional learning to engage not only our students, but also our staff and to engage our, our families as well. We designed this uh, with the lens of the multi-tiered system of support, uh, which is something that allows us to take a look at the whole child and then we can move quickly for children who may be uh, at risk or high risk. So at the tier one level, that's where we're really uh, addressing all students. And for instance, the curriculum is a tier one intervention. At the tier two level, we're looking at more targeted support. So that would be for about five to 10% of our students and those who might be at risk. And then at the tier three level, we're looking at our highest risk students, which would be about one to 5% of the population. So I'm gonna turn our presentation over next to uh, Faith Asbestos and um, we'll go from there with the next slide. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here to talk about this program. It's such, been such a great experience. I'm going to talk about the curriculum end. Um, we have our curriculum uh, taught by homeroom teachers with a morning meeting um, and with a specific uh, focus on the zones of regulation lessons. And then our special area teachers, um, precisely the phys ed teachers, have been teaching um, grade level um, lessons that are specific to each grade level that we came up with. Um, we're hoping that the common language from the zones will be something that is used throughout all grade levels in all schools. The language is currently being reinforced with the lessons that the phys ed teachers are teaching, um, also reinforced with additional read-alouds and supplemental activities and lessons that Mrs. Graham um, and I have been working on to, um, to be put together. So I'll need the next slide. Um, so some things about the program. Um, back in the beginning of the school year, we sent out a letter to all families letting them know about the program and its goals and also providing our contact information. We also made uh, toolkits for every single student in the district that would provide extra support. These toolkits included things like a little stress ball, a journal, a pencil, so they could write um, their thoughts down and um, other helpful tools um, that we just thought would be useful to add extra support. Um, as coaches, uh, Mrs. Graham and I support the teachers. We have office hours uh, daily pretty much where we can talk about the curriculum, give advice, um, hear opinions on lessons, give read aloud um, ideas. We also have been joining in with many teachers lessons to see how the curriculum's been implemented. We've been providing new resources on a weekly basis. Um, we made some uh, like Bitmoji book rooms. We made some read alouds for winter that were SEL focused and some other activities. Uh, we also did come and talk to all the new teacher hires about um, 
SEL with literacy focus. So we gave them some ideas specifically on where they could find some great read alouds that were, um, that were all based around SEL. Um, we also organized the SEL libraries. We spent a lot of time over the summer researching the books that we thought would best fit um, in these libraries. And we created additional curriculum materials. Um, one thing that we just wrapped up, Mrs. Graham and I just submitted grant proposals um, to get even more literature for the SEL collections as it seems that uh, books are one of the best teaching tools and you can never have too many for them. Um, we're also trying to do some fun activities for our staff. We we're right working on on right now a just for fun book club so that teachers can engage with each other in a safe social way all through zoom um, with a fun book and we've been working with the preschool too um, this is um alexi and i with some um, videos and other um, mindfulness activities so it's been really great and looking forward to see what else we can do when we get back from our break so i'll hand this over now to mrs alexi Thanks, Faith. Um, again, I also want to thank everyone for allowing us to take the time to talk about the curriculum. Obviously, as the counseling coordinator, this is something that's incredibly important to me and to supporting our students. So thank you very much. Um, so as um, Faith mentioned and um, Vivian discussed a little bit, the idea of the curriculum being sort of the main tier one intervention. In addition to that, we also offer other universal interventions and services to students across all five elementary schools. Um, so as part of the curriculum, there's a daily check-in. So every student is able to report on how they're feeling each day. And this was something that was really important to the curriculum team when we started talking about it because you're missing that a little bit with students being on Zoom or you know, not walking into a classroom every day. Um, so this allows the teachers to engage with the students in a way that um, helps them understand where a student's starting each day. You know, We all know if we're having a rough morning, it sort of can spiral throughout the course of the day. So this was sort of our first level of intervention to be able to see where everyone is and be able to follow up on that report. Um, we also did a staff survey to find out sort of school-wide needs, what's happening in each building. Um, you know, are there some more kids struggling with the anxiety about coming into school? Are there kids struggling with conflict resolution because, you know, they have, they're, they're lacking that social interaction and, you know, some of them aren't engaging with uh, peers, right? So um, it helped us to be able to offer interventions at each school level um, to help support and educate the students in those topic areas. Um, also, uh, kind of new this year, I guess I started in February, um, right before <laughs> um, we went remote. Um, but so we have a counseling team um, that helps service all five elementary schools. So it consists of myself, um, three master's level clinical interns, and five master's level school psychology interns. Um, and we also participate in activities to help support each school um, specifically available to all students right now. Um, we created a virtual recess. Um, so that's for the preschool students and then um, grades K to three. And we're also doing what we're calling a lunch and laugh. Um, so that's for the upper elementary schools and that or up, upper elementary students. And the idea there was just that, you know, kids aren't having recess and lunch together anymore. And it's such an important social part of their day. Um, so this allows them to find a space to still connect and do age appropriate activities, or just kind of for the fifth graders, it's a lot of, oh, I got kicked out of my Zoom class today and I got so frustrated and they're kind of talking each other through it, um, which I think is a huge way to help the students continue to stay socially engaged. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so at the tier two level, um, we're looking at interventions that are a little bit more targeted to a specific group of students who might you know, have identified needs. So uh, for example, uh, we have a group of students who maybe every day is checking in and saying that they're in the yellow zone. They're having a hard time managing. They're feeling a little worried. They're feeling anxious or you know, having a hard time sitting still every day, or maybe they're really frustrated in the red zone. Um, and that check-in report is happening every day. Um, so the staff can come to the team and say, listen, we have these you know, five students who are struggling with these skills, and then we can create a group SEL intervention to support those students. Um, so right now we have a focus group um, that helps support students who have ADHD or struggle with executive functioning skills. Um, we have a positive peer mentor group 
Um, so we have students who are maybe struggling to maintain social connections and then students who are really like off the charts outgoing and really want to help other kids get involved. And we have paired those two groups of students together to help connect them um, and work on those skills. So all of those groups are led by um, a member of the counseling team um, and ideally run six to eight weeks. And then we kind of reassess and see where we are at the level of need for each student. Um, we also participate in all five elementary schools intervention and referral services teams um, to help support students at all tiers. Um, we do push in lessons for SEL support. Um, I recently had a teacher come to me and say that, you know, her class is struggling a little bit with tolerance right now. Um, so we created some lessons specific to that, you know, that's above and beyond that tier one curriculum and is targeted to that group of students within the classroom. Uh, next slide. And then finally, the tier three SEL interventions. Um, so these are the students who um, fall into that you know, one to 5% category who have been identified as a little bit higher need. Um, and that's, you know, so they're coming to the focus group. And even though they have this group support, they're still really struggling to generalize those skills into the class setting. Or maybe there's some other stuff that has come up in the focus group that's better met on the individual counseling level. So they're able to move to that school-based counseling support. Um, you know, we can consult with teachers to help with individualized behavior support plans for students. Um, and then for students who are really um, at a higher need, we can make a recommendation to outside providers. Um, so part of the counseling program is the Jefferson Behavioral Health Partnership. Um, so we have a, um, licensed family marriage therapist from um, Jefferson who comes and works with students um, in the school district. Um, the nice thing about this is it sort of takes the, um, you know, I have to try to find someone who's local, but who also takes my insurance and who specializes in kids, you know, in this age group. Um, the provider is in our district. She comes to Garfield. Um, she sees the students after school hours. Um, and right now she's doing both in-person and virtual sessions um, on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Um, I'm really kind of happy to report that her caseload is full and um, we've actually started the process of hiring a second provider. Um, but that's also to say that um, we've had five students come through the Jefferson Partnership and no longer need that level of support and have moved back down to, you know, the tier two participating in some groups, um, some check-ins with the teacher, things like that. Um, so we've had some, you know, nice success with having someone who's able to meet with me on a bi-weekly basis so we can talk about what's going on. And then I'm able to collaborate with the school staff and provide interventions and supports for the staff based on what the counselor's recommendations are. So it's been a really nice partnership. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing that. Uh, next slide. Um, so, you know, as um, Faith and Vivian mentioned, we also support families and staff. Um, so at the staff level, um, I also do office hour SEL consultations, um, individual coaching sessions for teachers who might be struggling with, you know, managing specific areas within the classroom. Um, we're doing monthly self-care activities. So once a month, um, we hold sort of topic-based self-care meetings just like this. Um, so we had like a cooking one, we had a book club, we had a music and people just kind of came together and talked about things that are of interest to them. Um, and then I also have a vir virtual faculty room on my counseling Google Classroom. Um, and that allows teachers to be able to like go to a faculty room and engage in different activities that um, are you know, surrounded mindfulness or self-care and things like that. Um, and then at the family consultation level, um, so I spend a lot of time meeting with families and talking about how to navigate uh, life with school at home. Um, you know, not everybody signed up to be able to manage a classroom. Um, so teaching parents how to make their home more educationally um, compatible, you know, creating a space for students, minimizing distractions, um, allowing the teacher to manage some of the things that come up on a day-to-day you know, -day school basis that parents typically haven't had to engage in. Um, so working on that boundary between school and home. Um, 
I provide SEL activities to do at home as well. That was really big in the spring. Um, a lot of people were looking for things to do and how to engage uh, their kids on, you know, how they're feeling and what's going on. Um, and then linking them to groups within the community. Um, so there's also a virtual counseling center on my Google Classroom that has a check-in request section. Um, so you can check in um, just kind of like the students do, sort of report where you are as a family and what's going on. And then we can touch base and see if there's additional supports or recommendations that I can make. Um, and then at the preschool level, we also do a community cafe. Um, so I participate in that as well. So parents come together and talk about different things that are happening within the community um, to be able to offer additional services and supports. Um, there's usually a speaker. Um, so last month there was um, a parent who came and talked about mindfulness. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and then as um, Faith mentioned earlier, we're doing some SEL videos and things like that for the community to use. Next slide. Um, so that's sort of the curriculum and the program um, in a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for your time and commitment to our curriculum and the social emotional learning of the students. Um, if you have questions related to the curriculum, you can always reach out to Faith. Um, and for SEL intervention related questions, um, I'm your point of contact. And then also there is the Google Classroom link and code. If anyone's interested in checking out the counseling program, Google Classroom, you can do it through that link. Anybody have any questions? I had a quick question. I don't know, can you hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, first of all, congratulations on this. This seems like a huge undertaking and I just want to say it seems so comprehensive and just like a wonderful program. So well done to all of you. I'm just, Thank you. I'm overwhelmed by just everything that you've just presented. So, um, I just, I wanted, you shared um, just about how you, the success you've seen from students in, that were in the tier three, being able to move back down to the tier two, um, which is wonderful. I just wanted to know, um, I just was wondering, are any of the students who, have you had any feedback from teachers who are, um, have students in the tier two um, and their students having success from being a part of this program? Yeah, I, yes. Um, so actually, I was just in an INRS meeting uh, last Wednesday, and we were talking about um, a student who has really done very well with um, the focus group participation, the idea that he is not alone in his struggles with being able to keep a routine and focus on a screen with, you know, 20 other students. Um, and he was sharing with his teachers some of the strategies that he found in the group. Um, and one of them was the thumbtack feature on Zoom. Um, and all the students in the class were like, I didn't even know I could do that. So like, not only are they finding success within the group, but they're also like sharing that success with the other students in the class, which I think is awesome. Um, I also started with a very small amount of virtual recess and lunch and laugh participants. Um, I think initially when we brought up the idea, the, uh, the concept of adding an additional virtual component to the day was a lot for people, um, but the kids really like it. And when they started talking about it, um, I am adding at least two students to a group every day. So even at the tier one level, like being able to stay connected, I think has really helped the students overall. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, I had a quick question. Um, first of all, I agree with, with Mary. I mean, and this could not have come at a better time considering um, what 2020 has brought to everyone. Um, I just question about the tier three. Um, how many, do you have any data on how many students we're servicing with this new Jefferson partnership? I do. Um, so we, in total, so 11 in total right now um, with three referrals that will start in January. Um, so, and then the five, that includes the five students that have moved back through. So um, the referrals started in March, um, program got up and running in February. We started with the paperwork and all that stuff. We got all that up and running right before we went on, um, you know, the schools closed down. So uh, we were able to maintain those referrals and services through the shutdown, which I, you know, right. it was awesome. Yeah, I was a little concerned about shifting to remote therapy. Um, I have a private practice also. So like being able to try to 
navigate that as someone connecting to services as well as someone providing services, it's it's certainly challenging. And the kids really stepped up to the plate too, which I think was great. Um, and you know, we had some flexibility with how we provide services, which I think helped keep the families connected to the service as well. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Also had a question and Echo, this is fantastic. And thank you so much for coming tonight to talk to us about this. This is such incredible work and so important for the kids. Um, thinking about that, I know you said you had a couple of grants that are out there to try to expand literacy um, resources, just wondering, you've had to make obviously some changes from what the plan was, but where do you see this moving forward to as like in the years ahead so that we continue to strengthen and grow here? Because I think this is just so important for kids in the district. I don't know who wants to take that one. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be like, this is what's in the plan, but things you're thinking about, like as you're growing, I know you said that not a lot of other districts are doing this. So no. we're really- I, mean, I, of... I can say that one thing is, is when we, when we were working on this curriculum over the summer, it was a team that in, included the, the three of us, as well as uh, two classroom teachers. And when we were designing it, we really didn't know what school was gonna look like come September. So I think that as the year has gone on, we've been really making a point to figure out which lessons are working really well, which ones we might need to tweak, um, more resources that we can add to the curriculum file. So on, on that level, those are the, the small things that we're doing. Right. Also, I, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, uh, so I also... Um, probably once a week participate in some sort of SEL. This new program's come out and you know we wanna tell you all about it. Um, and a lot of times they offer some really great like free resources. Um, so I've been like stockpiling that stuff um, to be able to continue to utilize it once you know we return to normal school. Um, we have these additional supports that have been created as a result of the pandemic, but you know, because they're available and they're free right now, being able to sort through those and sort of expand upon what we've already put in place. Um, that's sort of my hope to be able to offer some more groups and some more supports for the students at that level. And Mrs. Graham and I have continued to research um, books constantly and we provide resources um, and find the best websites and blogs where we can um, you know recommend books that students can read on their own at home or with families and just continuing you know, to look for ways to combine um, SEL and literacy together um, so that's one of like my, my our focuses as well and you know, to piggyback on that, we also, I don't think either of us mentioned it actually, Faith, the healing library. Oh, yes. So have, yeah, so we have a healing library. Um, right now it's located at Garfield because that's where the counseling um, component of the Jefferson program is. Um, but ideally to be able to expand that. So that's a resource that's available to families. So if there's a specific issue that's come up within the family, um, you know, the loss of a pet or the loss of a family member, or, um, you know, we've dealt a lot with people getting sick over this mm -hmm. you know, time. So there are books that families can check out with like a little, some of them have like a workbook that's um, accompanies the text and you're able to take them home and work through the interventions and um, lessons involved in the books as well. So we'd also are looking to expand that too. One of the things we talked about too, Kristen, was the um, transition from fifth to sixth grade. So we're starting to plan for that um, in the spring and really focusing on how we can make sure the fifth graders are ready and then into sixth grade you know, how that transition is working and making sure they're comfortable in middle school as well. I actually just had my first meeting on that today. Yep. <laughs> so I'm very excited about that. <laughs> you have a I question? Just to, no, I just wanted to close out by saying, you know, I was in all of those equity committee discussions at the beginning, Dr. Whitehouse knows. Sure. And, <laughs> and I feel like watch, watching all of this is so above and beyond what in the beginning of the equity committee, we would have thought could have been happening already. Like the, the, the speed with which you guys put all of this together at the absolute most needed time, um, you, uh, you should just all be so incredibly proud because this is so great. Our kids are so fortunate that they have these resources and they have all of you um, looking out for them. Uh, this is really great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. For Thank you. It's nice to hear and that. <laughs> I can also, um, before we end this, I, Dr. Whitehouse, do you have anything else? Nope, we're good. Okay. Um, I, I can say, 
you know, there are very traditional counseling programs out there, certainly in many schools. Um, our elementary counseling program under this model, um, using some of the experts that we have on, on staff that we have here on this call and, and a few others who they've mentioned, um, combined with our interns who, you know, really, really work hard with kids. Um, and, you know, our, our, our focus not only on working with our students, but also on the academics and staying current and being kind of out on cutting edge research as they can be. Um, you know, I, I could not possibly be more proud of this group of the interns that we have each year um, and the work that they do to support our kids. Um, you know, the, the CASEL competencies and the whole CASEL organization is built around academic and social emotional learning. Um, and I think over the years, one thing we've learned is that you cannot have one without the other. Um, and um, it's critical that we not ignore either one. And I think, um, you know, in, in a lot of places that continues to happen. And I think here that happened for a while. So we've come a long way and we've learned. Um, and, um, you know, I think that our kids in the long run, in the short term and the long term, are going to really benefit from this. So um, I can't thank um, these folks enough. Um, this is really one of the dreams that we had for the district to, to come to life. And as Reagan said, it's, it's easy to talk about it, um, but then when you take it from a, a, a concept to wow, it's actually happening, um, I don't know that it could have rolled out any better or any smoother than it did. And part of it is it's comprehensive, and the other part is the staff and the kids get support every time they need it. So, uh, you know, I think that that's, uh, that's another critical component. So thank you to all three of you and also to Dr. Whitehouse and um, keep up the great work. Yes, thank you so much. Um, it was a beautiful presentation. And as Dr. Oswald said, um, a very comprehensive curriculum. Um, my fear with, with uh, SEL programs are that some schools just kind of toss them in as an add-on. And this is much more than that. Um, and it's great to see that it's a comprehensive program in true affiliation with our uh, mental health partner partnership with Jefferson. So thank you so much. All right, um, so I'm going to take this um, moment in presentation to do a presentation from the board. Um, we would like to honor board member Nina Miller. I am reading from my notes, so I <laughs> do this quickly. Um, Nina joined our board to fill an interim position, and then she served for two full terms on her board, and her term is now finished. And unfortunately, what we must say goodbye to her. Um, and um, most importantly, the board would like to take this opportunity to thank her. Nina has served for many years and is currently the personnel chair uh, chairperson. Um, Nina has been dedicated and committed to the students of Collingswood Public Schools, and she has contributed important insight in many matters that contributed to student achievement and well-being. Um, for me, I found her to be a voice of reason. Um, she would quietly listen to all of us, and then she would help summarize our perspectives um, to try and bring us to consensus. So um, I will miss that. Uh, we value Nina's service to our board very much, and she will be missed. And Nina, thank you for all you've done. We appreciate you. We're sorry to see you go. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you and all the work that I know you all have uh, coming. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll be at the meetings now that I know what it's all about as that community member finally being able to voice <laughs> a whole lot of things. But um, I wish you well. Um, and I hope that all of you remember to just keep a sound mind and think about the students because that's who this is all about at the end of the day. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. And if we were in person, I'd be shaking your hand and <laughs> parading you in front of the audience and handing you a plaque. Um, but we do have a plaque for you. Um, Bethann, do you have it available? Yeah, I'm holding it up, you see? <laughs> so what I'm going to do, hopefully, um, yeah, <laughs> I'll get it. I'll probably have um, Mr. Steve Basile drop it off to your home or something, probably. Okay. So you have it, okay? Thank but you thank, very much. Thank you, Nina. It's been a pleasure working with you. Thanks for your service. Okay, um, moving on to our next section of the agenda is section three, Committee of the Whole. Um, our Committee of the Whole section gives us an opportunity for board committee chairs to um, review the items that are on the agenda and to um, inform other board members and also by way of the public format, um, the public of some of the discussion items that we discussed and some of the items of interest. Um, I need a motion to enter committee of the whole. So moved. And is there a second? Second. All in favor? 
Hi. Hi. So um, I will ask um, our finance buildings and grounds chairperson, Ms. Christine Celia, to um, begin with um, those items, please. Great. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, not very much on the agenda from finance buildings and grounds this month, but I'll highlight some of um, the items that may be of interest to the public. We received a donation of cafe tables, which is always very helpful because um, some of them go out every year and they're not cheap. So we're very appreciative of that. Um, we are retiring a 32 year old truck. So that's on the agenda as well, which I just found to be interesting that a truck has made it that long. That's a testament to our um, upkeep of our maintenance staff. Um, we also renewed an arrangement with the Camden County with Camden County College for the High School Plus program. For those people who don't know what this is, um, the High School Plus program allows it, um, students while they're in high school to take certain classes at the high school and also receive college credit for a nominal fee. Um, personally speaking, it's a great thing because your child comes out of high school with um, between with those credits and you know well over a semester in some cases of credits applying to college and it's not cheap usually so it's a great program and it's one of the great things that the high school does for our students who are college bound um uh, a couple items that we talked about last month, uh, the gym floor and bleachers project is moving along with just a couple minor delays due to these, um, how good our floor was to begin with. It was a little bit harder to get up than we anticipated, but uh, it should be ready for if and when we're able to go back to sports in January with the basketball teams. And I thank um, Mr. Higginbotham for uh, his work on that project. Um, and financially, we've received uh, over $176,000 back from the state insurance fund this year, which is always helpful. And we were reallocated um, um, over $17,000 in the CARES Act, which will be coming in as well. Uh, and that's about all I have. Thank you. Thank you so much. And um, now I'll ask Nina Miller to give the uh, personnel report. Oh, okay. Um, not a whole lot that um, need, could can be shared considering it's personnel, but I will highlight some um, Title I supplemental programs at the elementary school and the high school level. Um, there's various after school clubs uh, and some tutoring and some counseling. Uh, for the elementary school, I thought the after school clubs that were of interest, and, and these are all uh, remote. Um, a technology club, and then a ukulele club. Um, so I think the, the children will get a kick out of that. And if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Mr. Gross who's leading that. Yep. Um, and then some counseling. And then the same kind of Title I supplemental programs after school on the high school level uh, for tutoring and school counseling. And that's about all I have um, that can be presented. Great. Thank you. And I will um, ask Reagan Caden to give the... Um curriculum report, and then I'll ask any board members if they had comments on any of the three committees. So Reagan? Well, Nina stole some of my thunder. I was gonna talk about the supplemental programs too. It's like the one the one interesting thing that we overlapped on, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> that's totally fine. And I'm very jealous of the, the kids at Sharp that get to do the ukulele club, club with Mr. Gross. <laughs> um, but these are Title I funds. So they are um, going, they're happening at Sharp and at the high school exclusively and um, yeah, and I think that the the one on one tutoring and counseling after school is also fant a fantastic um, addition to that program. We do have um, one senior privilege that uh, for someone that to finish out the school year, which is very standard um, for us to do. And um, we did approve uh, some non resident students, especially in the year that we have right now with so much change going on. They just moved to Oakland and they will finish the school year at their their home schools of Garfield and Tatum, I believe. Um, uh, because we felt like, you know, we don't need to add one extra change during this this pandemic. Um, and then finally, the last thing that is on the agenda for curriculum is the school calendar for the 2021-2022 school year. Um, our, our start date for school will be uh, September 8th this, this coming year. And there was a lot of discussion in, I believe, all three committees. Um, so a lot of that has already happened, but I just wanted to, to say it during Committee of the Whole for the public as well, a discussion of ways for us to 
create a more inclusive and culturally responsive calendar in the future and how we could go about um, making sure we are um, being respectful and inclusive of the groups, um, the various groups in Collinswood that, and Oakland that would, well, I guess we're just doing Collinswood, um, would, uh, that we would need to include for all of that. So um, looking at various religious holidays and um, that sort of thing. So I know this was already kind of discussed in most of our committees, but I just, like I said, was bringing that up um, as something else that we discussed in curriculum. And that is all I have. Thanks. Thank you to all three committee chairs. Are there any board members during this committee of the whole session that has question or comment on any of the items mentioned by the committee chairs? No, I just I think it's important to note that you know we've had a lot of conversation about the, the calendar. I mean, having such a diverse community is one of our strengths, and then it also does pose a little bit of a challenge because um, a diverse community has so many different cultural based celebrations and holidays to celebrate, and we want to be inclusive of everybody um, and also stick within like a, a school year um, without having to extend the, the 180 days out into the summertime. So um, I think it's just something that we have to continue to look at and also, you know, make sure that we're keeping in tune with the uh, um, community's practices at home. Yeah, and Agreed. I know there was discussion, I think, I believe Nina um, was the one that suggested um, perhaps a survey going out to families to see um, who celebrates what or, you know, and that sort of thing. And and I also figure this is some something, a topic for, um, our next superintendent to also have those discussions with us and with the community too, and see what we can find out from that. And just a word of caution, uh, while it's equitable for certain individuals in the community, there are other uh, members of the community that do not practice either the uh, Christian or uh, Jewish faith uh, that may be coming to the board for their holidays off, which have never been done in the past, uh, which now gives you a problem on, uh, uh, as far as equity is concerned, how come we can give Christian and uh, Jewish holidays off, but we can't give other holidays off. So you should be prepared for that discussion. Well, I think that's and what I think, I think that's what we're trying to lend this to, um, not saying yeah. no, but seeing how we can build around being more inclusive of whatever it is you celebrate. Um, whether it's not. Yeah, there's no not. question that you can be more inclusive, but just remember that the days off, yes, tacked on at the end of the year. Right, and I, I do think it was Nina that uh, brought up the point that there's a there's a bigger picture of this too, um, not just being what holidays people celebrate, but um, you know, opening up to bigger picture, a uh, bit better communication about you know hearing disenfranchised voices and. Um, you know, making sure that every voice is heard. So I think that's the bigger picture behind this that we, we hope to continually work on as a board and as a district. Are there other comments? Um, and I should have also opened it up um, to board members or our student board reps on these agenda um, committee of the whole items. And were there any other topics that board members wanted to address at this time? Fiona, when do you want me to, to do the update? Uh, you could do that now if you wanted. You sure? Okay. Yeah, I, I think this is an appropriate know. place for it. I don't think we have it filled in anywhere else in the agenda. Right. So we were we just wanted to give a, a very brief update on where the board is in their superintendent search um, because we, we have said that we wanted to keep the community informed. Um, so... Uh, we just wanted again to thank everyone who participated in the survey, the, the community forum, one of the focus groups that were held throughout October that helped us create the list of the desired characteristics that we've used um, both for the job posting and then during the interview process that's guided us. Um, and then with the help of our search consultants, Dr. Adams and Dr. Brown, over the past few weeks, we've, been, we've spent time screening applicants and conducting interviews. We also met with the leadership of the um, Principals and Supervisors Association and, and both of the, uh, the Oakland and the Collingswood Teachers Associations to get uh, to gather some input on uh, what 
questions they they think would be good were good for us to have asked um, during our interviews and uh, you know if it was certain extra advice or things that they they were looking for in a candidate um, because their input was very important to us but it has been advised uh, that we keep um, the group of uh, of people in this interviewing in this process very small because in the world of social media. Um, we wanted the best candidates we could, and if their names got out to um, that they were applying for a different job, that would create problems. So, we were trying to get creative in ways to to get input from uh, from people that it was you know important to hear from. So, we're heading towards the final stages of the process, um, and we'll be working with Dr. Oswald and the administration to plan as smooth of a transition as we possibly can during COVID, and we hope to um, to have a a final candidate to introduce to everyone uh, in the new year. And uh, that's what we've got right now. <laughs> so thank you. Yeah, I'll just add that the board is pleased with, with the progress and, yes. and excited about what's happening. Um, are there any board members that um, would like to make comment on that update? Okay, seeing none, is there a motion to exit committee of the whole? Oh, so second. Is there, is there a second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, Ms. Gaden, can you take over the next section for me? Sure. Section five, miscellaneous dates. Sure. Uh, so um, for our section five, we end school for the, the 2020 calendar year on December 23rd with a single session day. Um, we have our winter break. And uh, then school will reopen and Dr. Oswald will be sending out the update on what that will look like, um, depending on COVID numbers on January 4th. And also our reorganization meeting for the Board of Education uh, will be happening uh, in this exact format that we're doing right now at 630 on January 4th. Yeah. And if you don't mind getting the next section for me as, sure. as well. No problem. So section, moving to section six, which is routine board business, is simply an approval of the minutes from our um, our last our, our meeting on November twenty third, twenty twenty. So we need a motion. So moved. I moved. And a second. Second. And then um, section seven is our section for public comment. Fiona, are you ready? Yeah. Uh, do we need a roll call vote on that, Beth Ann? Uh, okay. No. Just just okay. in all, all, all in favor. All in favor. Oh, sorry. Aye. All in favor. Aye. 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 Hi. Thank you. Yeah, um, Ms. G so I'm having, I'm working from my phone and I'm having technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so if you don't mind, um, maybe continuing through to the um, student reports. Okay, so for, for section seven is our public comment. And um, this is a little different um, than normal. We, um, you still have the, the, please make your comments in five minutes or less. This section is for items that are currently on the agenda. Um, additional comments can be made later in the meeting and the public is reminded to attempt to resolve all co complaints and concerns uh, through appropriate staff members and administrators first. So I believe Dr. Oswald, correct me if I'm wrong, if someone from the public would like to make a comment, they can put their name in the chat and also try to raise your hand because that is how you will be able to unmute yourself. Um, am I correct there, Dr. Oswald? Sorry, I muted myself. <laughs> um, you are, um, I, I just, I think I, we know everybody on the call. So I, I just I allowed you to unmute stuff. yourself. So if you want to unmute yourself, you can. And I'm sorry, Jen Rossi um, is uh, 114 East Palmer Avenue. I uh, would like to make a comment. Jen, can you unmute yourself? I think you should be able to. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now yeah. you're good. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Uh, Jen Rossi, 114 East Palmer yeah. Avenue. I uh, just wanted to say that um, in regards to the SCL presentation that we saw earlier, um, as a caregiver of a child who is uh, taking advantage of those uh, uh, virtual recess sessions, um, they are something that she very much looks forward to and that they're very much enjoyed here. Um, we have to stop everything else in the house. Wait, it's time for recess. <laughs> She goes running to the other side of the house to sign on. So I'll say that um, those have definitely been appreciated as well as the um, 
uh, calm down corner efforts and the other SEO uh, efforts that have been coming out as part of the uh, initiative. So I just wanted to say thank you and to say as a caregiver that they are appreciated and recognized. So thank you. Thank you very much. That's nice to hear. Yeah, that's great to hear. We Thanks also really so enjoy having her. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other public comment? It doesn't look like anything's in the chat. Dr. Oswald, should we give people in a minute or two? Well, 30 seconds or <laughs> two. Um, I think you could do a last call. I don't, I don't think anything else is coming in, but. Anyone There's nothing else? there. May indicate in the chat if they wish to speak. There will be a second opportunity for public comment. Okay, so if there's none, um, we will move forward to the superintendent's report. Dr. Oswald. Yep. One second, let me get there. Oops. Um, all right. Uh, so the enroll enrollment report uh, for the month, you will see that we have uh, November of 2020, we had 2,218 students um, in the district. School safety report, uh, safety drill reports. We are running fire drills and um, emergency drills, crisis drills uh, each month. They look very different than they ever have. Um, so we are maintaining social distance and those types of things. Um, so the drills are kind of the best we can do right now. Um, and we do run drills in our hybrid schedule for both the blue and the gold groups. Um, so the, the former drills uh, twice a month is now four times a month. Um, suspension reports, uh, good news. We have not had any students suspended and we have no uh, reports of bullying. So those are all good things. Um, and then the, la the first part, the policy, only policy that's up for a first reading tonight is the transportation by private vehicle policy. Um, and I think, um, Ms. Cecilia, you asked for a change in this, and I just want to make sure that we hit that. Um, so drivers must provide proof of insurance of a minimum of $300,000 combined, blah, 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 right? Does that sound good? It does. Thank you. Okay. Um, and that's it. So that's a first read. That'll be on uh, flip to the second read next month. That's it. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, and section nine of our agenda is um, our opportunity to hear from our student representatives. Do we have reports from our students this month? So, um, Asia? Yeah. Yep. Yes, we do. Um, for academics, I'm glad to say that there were 24 inductees for National Honor Society for the juniors, and there were six seniors who were inducted. Me and Nicolette were actually uh, two of the six seniors that were inducted uh, December 10th. So um, that was pretty exciting, something I actually look forward to despite all that's going on. We also have had many, many seniors get into colleges. I think it's actually on our Collinswood Counseling Instagram page, but some of the schools are Rutgers, New Brunswick, UNC, Williamson, Delaware, Widener, Stockton, amongst others. Um, several of our TV students have came, uh, came together and decided that we wanted to do something special. So we're doing a special edition of Good Morning Collinswood, the quarantine edition. Um, me and Ayana are personally responsible for doing the teacher appreciation videos. So right now I'm actually collecting B-roll and footage uh, from my peers saying teachers that they appreciate and why and what they've done for them. And honestly, watching all these videos, even though I can only make my video three minutes, it's really heartwarming to see and hear that teachers are really doing their best to try to accommodate our schedules. And it just it, may, it shows that they care. So. That is for the academics, for the extracurriculars. Um, the student council actually just came to get together and deliver food and supply donations. I'm part of student council um, to the Cathedral Kitchen in Camden, which is great. And we're also trying to get together our annual tr tradition of the reindeer games. Um, I think we're doing like the virtual version. I have to look into it more tonight. But um, Nick, I guess Nicolette can talk about the athletics. Um, yeah, so for athletics this year, for obviously for the winter sports, everything is pushed back. But for um, the fall of this year, there was a lot of act honestly good things for like all of the sports. So for like the girls soccer team, they won the uh, con uh, the canola. <laughs> okay, I can't even say it. <laughs> the conference uh, Patriot Division and Championship. Um, the for this year for field hockey, um, we defeated Pember Pemberton seven to zero in the opening round of our playoffs. Um, and we also reached the semifinals for this year. So that was also really exciting. 
Um, in the cross country sectional championship, senior Sophie Seidel finished third this year. Um, senior Josh Forrest finished second, and senior Owen Marish finished twelfth. Um, also for this year, um, Izzy Draper and I made all conference for the field hockey team, so that was very exciting. And other players on um, other sports team also made all conference. So Maddie Ify, Regan Riley, Avery Sullenberger, who which is a freshman, so that was exciting for her. Um, Emmy Waldron, and I think that was it for the girls' soccer team. Made um, also Colonial Conference for the patient division first team, so that was um, big for them this year. And that was basically it for the fall sports. It was kind of sucks for the winter sports for this year of all of their sports getting pushed back. But hopefully, when sports are allowed to happen again, big things will happen for the um, winter sports people. But that was really it. Thanks, Nicolette. Thank you. Any anything else from our student reps? So although things, um, you know, admittedly are, can be frustrating, um, it's amazing how resilient you guys are, and just hearing all these things that are still going on, um, it, it's impressive. So we're happy. Thank you. Congratulations about the National Honor Society. A couple of us were at the um, the induction ceremony, and it was a very very well done for. For doing it over zoom they you guys all did a really great job of still making it seem special for everyone so nice nice work yeah i think that was yeah along with that i feel like obviously it wasn't the same with um being in school and right. on, on doing that in person but i think it was a really good job and i really want to thank for everyone who put it together miss winkler and yep. mr jackson for everyone for like doing that for us because it all worked out and made it seem somewhat of a special thing to do you know to look forward to that's great. Any board members have any comments for our students before we move forward? Okay, well, thank you so much, uh, students. And uh, you are, as always, welcome to stay and also free to leave if you have things to do. So thank you so much. Um, the next section on our agenda is uh, section 10, our business administrator board secretary report to be presented by Ms. Coleman. This evening, um, I have for your approval the November 2020 uh, monthly transfers, your November 2020 secretary treasurer uh, cash reports, as well as the student activity financial statement, uh, the November 2020 food service financial statement, and then the listing of the December purchase orders that were issued, as well as a listing of the December uh, bills to be paid, the warrants that will be sent tomorrow morning. And that's what I have for tonight. Thank you. Um, section 11 will be um, the approval of the items in our finance buildings and grounds. Um, so um, Ms. Celia, um, did you have anything to add before I ask for the approval? Uh, no. Okay, so okay. we are looking for approval of items 11.01 .01 through 11.14. Is there a motion for that? So um, moved. Is there a second? Second. Questions or comments from board members at this time? Okay. Uh, roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Ms. Savarino? Yes. Ms. Cecilia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Yes. Mr. Wood? Uh, Mrs. Wood? Yes. Ms. Henry. Yes. Thank you. Section 12 of our curriculum committee. Ms. Caden, do you have anything to add before we seek approval? Nope. Okay, so we are seeking approval for items 12.01 through 12.09. Is there a motion for those items? Move, we accept those items. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Questions or comments from board members before we vote? Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Mrs. Severino? Yes. Ms. Cecilia? Yes. Mr. Stotts? Yes, Trip those items marked with a double asterisk where I abstain and item 12.09 where I vote no. Okay. Mrs. Wood? Uh, yes, except for the items marked with single or double asterisks. 
We're at Abstain. Okay. Miss Henry? Yes. And section 13 of our agenda is our personnel committee report. Ms. Miller, is there anything you'd like to add before we seek approval for the items listed? No. So we are looking for a motion for approval of items 1301 through 13.14. Is there a motion? So moved. And is there a second? Second. Questions or comments from board members before we vote? Hey, roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Yes. Mrs. Saverino? Yes. Ms. Cecilia? Yes. Mr. Stotz? Yes, except those who work with the double asterisk where I abstain. Mrs. Wood? Yes, except for the items marked with asterisks where I abstain. Ms. Henry? Yes. That moves us to section 14 on our agenda for this evening, and that is our policy and miscellaneous section presented by Dr. Oswald. Um, and thank you. Um, 1401 is a job description um, uh, under the preschool grant for a part-time preschool supervisor um, to assist with uh, monitoring the preschool program and site supervision. Um, and 1402 is the HIV report, which uh, unfortunately we are lucky to say there are none. So uh, 1401 and 1402 are the items we're looking for approval. Thank you so much. Do we have a motion to approve items 1401 and 1402? So, so moved. moved. And a second? A second. Okay, great. Any questions or comments from, bo from board members? Roll call, please. Mr. Connor? Yes. Mr. Craig? Yes. Mrs. Caden? Yes. Ms. Mello? Yes. Ms. Miller? Yes. Ms. Rivera? Ms. Rivera? Someone just fell off. I don't know if it was serious. You may have lost her. Yeah, I don't know. Right. Mrs. Severino? Yes. Ms. Cecilia? Yes. Mr. Stotz? Yes, on 1402, and I abstain on 1401. Thank you, Mr. Stoss, for catching that. Mrs. That one should have asked. I should have an asterisk. Do what I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, my answer is the same as Bill's. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Ms. Henry? Yes. Our next item on the section on the agenda is our second opportunity for public participation. Um, as always, um, please state your name and, mm -hmm. and address. I guess type it into the chat and keep your comments to five minutes or less. Um, this is to discuss any items on the, any items at all, uh, doesn't have to be on the agenda. And um, you are reminded to um, take all of your concerns through appropriate staff members before coming to the board. So do we have um, public comment? Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Kate Delaney. She's free. Hi, everyone. Uh, Kate Delaney, 126 East Palmer. Um, just a quick question about the part time preschool supervisor. I was wondering what the timeline is for that. Will, be, will that hire be for next year? Dr. Oswald? Um, we're looking, we'll post that um, probably right after the new year um, and hopefully get someone in. Um, prior to the start of next year. Great. Thank you so much. Anyone else? Okay, Dr. Oswald, there doesn't appear to be... Nothing else right now, no. Okay, last call for public comment. <laughs> okay. Seeing none, we will move to the final section of our agenda, which is the motion to adjourn. Is there a motion? So moved. And is there a second? Second. So All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Motion adjourned. I mean, meeting adjourned.